Okay, welcome everyone to the closing game. Uh, if you've never been to ELC before, uh, you may think, well, this is a strange turn of events. Uh, but this is uh, something we do just kind of for fun at the end of uh, the conference. Uh, it's a tradition we've had for many years. And so um, I, I am going to, these gloves are like super tight. And they said one size fits all, but uh, my hands are maybe too big. Anyway, but uh, thank you for attending ELC. Thank you for coming out. And I hope we have some fun. We have some great prizes. Uh, I need to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get to the game portion. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So, like I said, I'm going to take these gloves off. Otherwise, my, well, there we go. And then I also need to wear my regular glasses, which is too bad because it ruins the effect, don't you think? <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> Uh, first thing is a lot of thanks are due uh, to a lot of different people that make this event possible. Um, so first we have the sponsors, uh, a big shout out to them. We could not do uh, an event in, uh, like this with uh, this nice venue and everything except for our sponsors. So we want to thank our diamond sponsors, Intel and TI. <laughs> and Really appreciate them. Also, our platinum sponsor, Mitakura, and our gold sponsors, Lenaro NXP and Yocto Project. And then our silvers, Analog Devices, Canonical Legalia, and Wolf SSL. So thank you to all of those. So, but uh, the money is important, but so is a lot of the behind the scenes work. So we want to thank our program committee, uh, Jeff Ozier Mixon, Thomas Pettizzoni, some of who are sacrificing, uh, those two in particular are sacrificing their opportunity to win prizes by being judges today. Uh, but we also have Kate Stewart, uh, Yoshi Kobayashi, uh, Marta Ryszynska, uh, Drew Fustini, Walt Miner, and myself. So that sounds, seems weird to give myself applause. But. <laughs> and then of course uh, the speakers. Uh, the speakers really are the reason we come, the preparation that they made to uh, research technical topics and present uh, things they're working on uh, is one of the more important reasons we come together. And then you as attendees, uh, the hallway conversations that we have, all of that goes into making this uh, a fun and useful event in terms of your role. And I would remit, be remiss if I did not mention the Linux Foundation staff. Uh, they're some of the best in the business, and uh, they really are some of the best in the business. If you've ever tried to run an event, it is, there's so much stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, so now, uh, speakers, you are supposed to turn your slides in on Monday, but if you have not, please get them on uh, sketch.org. Uh, there's a couple of ways um, you can manage sessions on your session page. Um, you can, if you can't figure it out, just email them to cfp at linuxfoundation.org. Please don't make us hunt you down. For some reason, there's always like one or two stragglers, uh, and it's, it's a pain. The, uh, all of the EOS sessions were recorded, um, and those will be on, available on YouTube. Look for the Linux Foundation playlist. So, you know, sometimes it's like a three ring circus. Uh, if you need to go see a talk that you couldn't go to because you had conflicts, uh, it'll all be available. Um, and I think that's a, a really remarkable resource. Um, we do have a presentations page that's already been set up. It's got nothing on it right now as of today. Uh, but as the, we'll, we'll organize that page and put the slides and links to the videos on that page when they become available. So, um, and then future events. So coming up in Vienna, I know this is a little bit of a change of plans from what we've announced previously, but there will be a mini ELC uh, in Vienna in September. And uh, it's going to be a little bit smaller, only two tracks on two days, so a little bit smaller than usual. Uh, but the CFP is open now, so we encourage you, uh, if you have interest uh, in, uh, in presenting at that, the deadline is coming up pretty soon. So it's April 30th, so only a couple of weeks. Um, and we've spent, one of the reasons we went a little bit smaller is we didn't want to overlap with plumbers. Uh, and so plumbers is the end of that week. 
Um, and so uh, that's, that's that. Okay, so now it's time to play some games. Um, I like games where everyone has a chance to win. I was just talking to uh, some of the members of the LF staff. We used to have games where we would just invite a couple audience members to come up and play. But in this game, everyone in the audience has the potential to win. Uh, there are two types of games. We have skill and luck. Skill, so-called. Uh, we will, the, the basic idea of the games is that we narrow the contestants down. We start with everybody in the room. We'll have you stand up. And, and then if you get an answer wrong, it's a trivia game. If you get an answer wrong, we request that you sit down. Uh, and then as soon as we've whittled it down to uh, a number less than the number of prizes we have left, uh, we will, we will uh, announce the winners. So what will happen is we have some judges in the room that have no, slips of paper, and it corresponds to these pieces of prizes. So they'll, these, these prizes on the table. Um, and then once, once we're done handing out a round of prizes, we'll restart. We have multiple rounds of questions and multiple games. Oh, OK. So everyone should have a set of cards. Uh, they were placed on your seat, a red card and a green card. And it'll be obvious what to do. You're supposed to hold those up. And our judges will be checking to make sure that if you got the answer wrong, uh, you sit down. Um, uh, let's see. OK, so what have we got for prizes? Actually, more prizes than usual. Uh, very generous donations from BeagleBoard.org and from Texas Instruments. Uh, so we have a lot of development boards. We have a Beagle 5 board, a Beagle Y AI board, and we've got 10 Beagle Play boards. Lots of fun to play with. And uh, each of those comes in a bag full of TI swag. So that's, that's uh, if you. While you're running your board at home, you can use your TI pen to take notes on your TI pad of paper. Um, so uh, we want to really thank uh, Texas Instrument for, for providing those. Um, and then we also have four Mastering Embedded Linux Programming books by Chris Simmons. And so uh, in case you need a refresher, if you, or if you're just starting, those are, those are great. Um, and then. Uh, also, we have gift cards. So we have gift cards ranging in value from $25 up to $100. So nothing to sneeze at. Uh, and then we have LDME and N.NET professional subscriptions. We have two of those. Um, and we also have souvenirs from Seattle. The LF event staff has gone out and, and found some stuff uh, like this. So we've got uh, a little wooden cubic robot thing. We've got the Space Needle and Legos and a bag with a bunch of things, coasters and, and pens and, and uh, uh, things from Seattle. And of course, uh, hot tamales. So uh, I don't know if you know, this is kind of an inside joke. Uh, the official candy of the Fuego test framework is hot tamales. And uh, so uh, we throw that in every once in a while. We don't know if people like them. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so, but. Uh, uh, if you win the LWN.net certificate and one other prize that I will place this next to, uh, you, you also get some hot tamales. Um, so our first game is going to be Embedded Linux History, uh, Technical Nerd and Space Trivia. OK, note the space theme. Uh, maybe you've caught that already. Uh, and an important disclaimer, the game is not fair. OK. So this is important to remember, because there's always someone who says, wait a minute. It's like the, the answer that the presentation has is the correct answer. Uh, and so, um, OK, so everybody up. Everybody stand up. This is quite an athletic game, actually. For uh, <laughs> And so the current released version of the kernel is is it green? So hold up the green card if you think it's 6.8. Hold up the red card if you think it's 6.9 RC4. Oh, OK. No, you cannot hold up two cards on this one. <laughs> you got you to gotta decide which of these. <clears throat> and the correct answer is green, 6.8, if you were holding up red. So RC stands for release candidate. It's not an actual release. Uh, it says it right there in the name. OK. So this is actually, I, I, and I apologize, if you're a newcomer, uh, this is the first question on every single game I play. <laughs> so 
People know my tricks by now. Uh, well, let's go on. Okay, so researchers recently demonstrated uh, the ability to double the resolution of, of optical microscopes. What mechanism did they use to do that? This is, this is like pretty earth shattering when you think about it. They can double the resolution of optical microscopes. Was it with AI, super sampling in AI, or was it using entangled photons? Okay, and the answer, which is very cutting side, uh, is <laughs> entangled photons. The fact that they can use entangled photons to increase the resolution, that is just mind blowing. Um, and so it has, you have to be like a scientist doing quantum stuff to understand what the heck they're doing. Um, okay, which of the following tasks has been automated recently using AI and and this is important, is scheduled for deployment in June. This is gonna actually be released to the public in June. Is it ordering fast food at a drive through restaurant or loading dishes in a dishwasher? Okay, and the answer is ordering fast food at a drive through Wendy's has announced that they're going to have their customers talk to a chat bot. <laughs> Thing you, the order entry efficiency can only improve. Uh, so, okay, we're getting pretty good. So you who are still standing, you're, you're in good shape. Okay, this is a tricky one. Yeah, uh, the XZ backdoor security flaw. Was it green, possible, because XZ was open source? Or red, discovered, because XZ was open source? You can only, you have to choose one. You cannot do both. Okay, you have to choose one. Well, I am so nice. Both of those answers are correct. So I made you choose, but you're, nobody got eliminated that round. Oh, and pithy quip goes here. Um, okay, this is harder. Okay, this is harder. How many instances of Linux are running on Mars right now? right this minute. Is it zero, green, red, one, or green and red, two? How many instances of Linux are running on Mars right now? Okay. This was hard to figure out, uh, and I'll explain. It turns out it's one, so red. So how many do we have left? Seven. I think we can call you guys winners. All right. Okay. Well, there, well, yeah, stay standing until you get your ticket. Um, so let me explain. So there are two copies of Linux running, running on Mars, but one is in the helicopter. Turns out that there's a Zigbee base station on the Perseverance rover. That one runs continually because it's powered by a nuclear thermal generator. And the other one is solar, and so it goes to sleep every night. And it's currently where the rover is. It's asleep right now. So, <laughs> so I'm surprised more of you don't have Mars time figured out. Uh, and here's the interesting thing. You could theoretically, if you happen to get some craft near the Perseverance rover, you could hack into that Zigbee signal and send, send all kinds of crazy data to NASA. Um, uh, this is called high physical security. Um, okay, everybody up. Okay, the most photographed landmark in Seattle is the Space Needle or the pink elephant car wash sign? Okay, there's a lot of chatter here. I hope the Seattle people got this one right. It's the pink elephant car wash sign. Oh, that one was brutal. I don't know why it is, it is photographed more often than the Space Needle. I find that unfathomable, but people have done studies on Instagram. Uh, and it does have some impressive engineering. Uh, let's see. OK, how many developers were involved in the creation of the 6.9 RC4 kernel? 6.9 kernel, how many, how many developers? Was it about 1,000 or about 2,000? <laughs> okay, and the answer is 
about 2,000. And it's been consistently about 2,000 for like, I don't know, for the last three or four years. Um, I have a tool that I use for my embedded status presentation that I look at this with. Um, and so that's, it's pretty amazing that it's that consistent. Um, okay, this was really interesting. What company recently demonstrated an interactive dress that can change colors dynamically while being worn? Was it Zara or Adobe? Come on, use your Linux knowledge. <laughs> okay, yes, this is called a wild guess. It was Adobe. So if you get a chance, I didn't put the link on here. Uh, well, actually, this, uh, this source that I have does have the link. It is totally cool. Um, oh, are we down to four? OK, you guys are winners. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah, this dress is not only with the flick of a button can you change the pattern on the dress, uh, but they made it so that it had sensors. So as you're walking around, th that last picture on the right there, um, the uh, woman demonstrating it, who was actually the software engineer and the seamstress on it, uh, she, as it walked, it was like this uh, wave pattern. So water would bounce and stuff. Totally cool. Actually, this, uh, this stuff was from um, a demonstration that Adobe did in October, but it actually has hit the runways. So it was put on the runway in Paris in February. So interactive fashion coming soon. Uh, to a store near you. Okay, everybody back up. Okay, recently Linux was demonstrated running on a processor that cost 70 cents or 15 cents. Okay, and the answer there is 15 cents, which is pretty amazing. Okay, so I got to talk about this a little bit. Um, the processor was a RISC-V, but it didn't have sufficient addressing or something going on. And so it had to boot the kernel from 8 meg SPI NOR, and it had to use a RISC-V emulator to address the kernel, uh, so because it couldn't address it. So he had a RISC-V processor emulating a RISC-V. I don't know. Uh, but 15 cents, uh, I believe, that's the lowest I've ever heard, which is pretty cool. Um, OK. The LEV-2 Lunar Nano Rover. Uh, this landed on the moon in late January. Um, and it was, did that use the Linux OS? Is that true or false? So, OK. It's actually false. <laughs> I wish. There's a long story behind this, because the team that did this board came to me and asked if I could put Linux on it. and. Uh, and I said, 1.5 meg, are you crazy? Uh, anyway, so it's running Nut NutX. It's, so it's not Linux, but it is open source, so it's pretty cool. It actually is the rover that took this picture, which is a pretty famous picture of the, of the Japanese lander. Um, OK, for the first time this year, Linus has hinted that he may retire soon. Is that true or false? And to my knowledge, it is false. So if you were green, sit down. Uh, he's, uh, I, he keeps, I know how old he is, and I know he's getting at kind of normal, he's getting into retirement age territory, but I think he's said, uh, the last thing I've ever heard him say about retirement was that he has no plans to, to retire anytime soon. So he'll, he'll keep going. OK, University of Glasgow. Uh, recently received funding to study an innovative mechanism to improve performance of solar installations. Was it by using geoengineering to decrease cloud cover, or was it to, uh, by using orbital mirrors to increase the sunlight to the array? Okay, and you'd think in the University of Glasgow that maybe cloud cover was a problem, but it turns out that they're all about orbiting mirrors. So that's actually pretty interesting. You've heard a lot of people saying, oh, we'll put solar satellites up there and they'll beam the, the microwaves from space. But it turns out there's all kinds of technical problems. But this is, this is eminently doable with existing technology. They said, based on their initial studies, 
they could increase a solar array's efficiency by like 30 to 40 percent with the extra hours of sunlight that they could provide. Okay, Pike Place Market in Seattle. Is it known for being the oldest continuously operating farmer's market in the U.S.? Or is it the first farmer's market in the U.S. that on the U.S. mainland that sold pineapples? <laughs> and it turns out that this one is the uh, <laughs> Pike Place Market, 1907. Longest continuously operating, over 100 years. Okay, uh, pineapples are good, especially on pizza. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. Okay, scientists have created the world's first working nanoscale electromotor. This is actually a pretty big deal. I mean, people working in uh, nanotechnology, did they assemble it using an atomic force microscope or by folding DNA molecules? Okay, the answer on this one is Folding DNA molecules. All right, how are we doing? So I think we need to go one more round. Okay, when was EOS last held in Seattle? Was it three years ago, eight years ago, or EOS has never been held in Seattle? Okay. This is interesting because it's never been held in Seattle. <laughs> so ELC was held three years ago, so I know why some of you answered that. But ELC and EOS are not the same. The game is not fair. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and give these people prizes. Yay. Okay, and then after this, I need a, can you guys confer and tell me what, what we're at? On my side, I see a bunch of Oh, okay. Okay, so, okay, eight, how, how many do you have? How many slips do you have left? Okay, let's do one more round. I've got some, I think they're interesting questions. Okay, everybody out. <clears throat> More than half of all uh, spacecraft in the known universe are running Linux. Is that true or false? More than half of all spacecraft. And the answer, maybe shockingly, is true. <laughs> because the total number of spacecraft that we know about is less than 10,000. It's about 9,500 or so. And Starlink and Planet Labs, just their constellations alone, uh, are about 5,900 craft. So uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Um, OK, research. This seems like a gimme to me, but we'll see. Research indicates that AI-generated code gets reverted more often from projects where it has been introduced. Is that true or false? Do you think AI code gets reverted a lot? It does. <laughs> it does. Uh, I don't remember the exact statistics from the studies, but multiple studies have been done to look at rever uh, reversion rates. And uh, the bottom line is that using Copilot is strongly cor correlated with mistake code. Uh, OK, so be careful using Copilot. Double check it. Um, a tech startup recently announced plans to build a data center where? Was it on the moon or at the bottom of the ocean? Oh, this is interesting. OK. On the moon. Here's the crazy thing. They already placed some prototype hardware on the moon. In, that, in the IM mission that was just done in March, or was it late February? Anyway, they actually, this was one of the private companies that had a module on that. And so they actually plan later this year to put, uh, to put a, a storage center, data storage center on the moon. Very hard to break into. Uh, so that's, that's crazy. The lunar economy is already starting. Um, OK, this is also kind of mind blowing. An AI chip was announced recently that will have a large number of transistor elements. Was it 4 trillion or 100 billion? 
Oh gosh, I didn't get very many of you on that one, four trillion. I, four, when I, I did this exact same question in, at ELC in Prague, which was only like nine months ago, and the answer was the other answer. <laughs> so it was like, it's crazy how fast uh, the AI is driving a lot of, uh, a lot of innovation here. Um, I think we need to keep going. The official nickname of Seattle is, is it green, the Emerald City, appropriately enough, uh, red, the Queen City, or green and red, the Rain City? What's the official nickname? Okay, you gotta commit. Turns out it's Emerald City. Uh, it was, Seattle actually did used to be called Queen City, and uh, in terms of rain, uh, this was a bad week to do this question because the weather has been gorgeous. Uh, but it's overcast a lot, but it actually doesn't rain that much. Um, but uh, okay, I think we, how, how are we doing? We got, we got to do one more. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay, the first transparent semiconductor was created in the last year using a laser on a glass substrate. Is that true or false? What? Uh, we'll go with calendar year. Within the, within the last calendar year. And the answer is false. And the reason for that is actually transparent semiconductors have been around a long time. Actually CES showed a couple of transparent TVs this year. Uh, so that means it was developed way there. But what did happen was they made one out of standard Tellurite glass using just a laser. So they were able to etch stuff into the glass using, using a laser. Okay, so how many are we at? One, two, three, four. Okay, sorry, we gotta do one more. Okay, so BusyBox was initially created for MMUless systems, UC Linux. Is that true or false? Do you know your, do you know your history? Apparently most of you don't. <laughs> All right, so these guys are winners. It was actually created for Debian boot floppies. <laughs> so this was back when floppy, floppies were smaller uh, and actually existed. Uh, so that was, that was the use case for BusyBox. Okay, I think... Uh, how are we doing? Do we have enough to do one more round of trivia? I don't know where I'm at on my trivia. Let me, 22? Okay, okay, let's do one more. One more trivia and then we'll go to luck. Okay, everybody up. Okay, the cell phone in your pocket has more computing power than the Apollo mission that traveled to the moon and back, including Onboard and ground control computers. Okay, I didn't fool anyone with this one. Oh, well, maybe a couple of people. I apologize. Yeah, the ground computers in the 60s. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's do this one. Okay, this one's interesting. What percentage of Linux kernel developers are first time contributors every release? Is it 2% or 12%? I think this is kind of mind-blowing. It's uh, red, 12%. And think about that. Think about the fact that every kernel release, uh, there's about 250 people who have never submitted a patch before to the kernel that we're aware of, okay? There's still an opportunity for you to get involved in kernel development, which is, which is pretty amazing. Okay. Um, a research group announced a processor that could be produced for less than one cent per chip. Okay, what was their breakthrough? Was it because the chip was made out of plastic or because they reduced the gate count? Okay, it was because they reduced the gate count. So if you're red, stay standing. Um, it turns out that people have been doing plastic processors for a while, but the yield has been way, way low. And so the actual, the way to overcome the yield problem was just to have less transistors, to keep the gate count down. I think these guys got over 80% yield, which is pretty good for a plastic chip. So one cent per chip, that's amazing. Um, okay. 
What is the average airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Is it 11 meters per second, or is the correct answer African or European? <laughs> OK. It turns out I'm going to give it either, either answer is correct. There's a, there's a really funny web page that talks about the exact dynamics where the guy figures out how fast a swallow flies, an unladen swallow. OK. OK, according to the Debian popularity contest, what text editor is more popular? <laughs> is it Vim, Emacs, or Nano? Oh, yeah, and there's the, the Emacs user at work. <laughs> OK. This will blow your mind. It turns out it's Nano. <laughs> So the, the interesting thing about this is this is the first year, I've done this question before, this is the first year it's nano. It's always been Vim. Uh, sorry, Emacs people. So uh, Linus Torvalds was actually bitten by a penguin. Is that true or false? Was, OK, not fooling anyone with this one either. This is a long, long time ago. Uh, but he was bitten by a penguin in Canberra. So I think we still have, how, how what are we at? OK, how many are standing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do one more. Uh, this is a repeat, so if you uh, are come to closing games a lot, uh, how many processors are there right now running Linux in low Earth orbit? Is it about 6,400 or is it about 400,000? You got to decide. It's over 400,000. Wow, OK, all right. It, it turns out that each Starlink satellite, especially the V2s, the V1s only had 66 Linux processors. The V2s have 85 Linux processors, and there's over 5,000 in orbit. So that's a lot of processors. I think, I think within a couple of years, it'll become self-aware, and it'll be, it'll be Skynet. Uh, so OK, so that's it for that game. Oh, I, we're, I'm not going to do this as a uh, question, because we're going to move on to the, the rock, paper, scissors. But I thought this one was funny. Uh, so <laughs> does Linus Torvalds prefer to do indentation using tabs, spaces, or a mix? <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah. It turns out, well, I mean, he talked about this in the, in the uh, keynote. Uh, and so uh, for, just for your reference, I put both a tab and a space on the screen. <laughs> And that's actually true. There is a tab and a space there. Um, we'll do one more. Uh, this was something that Linus mentioned. Linus first got into kernel development because he was trying to impress his future wife, or he likes understanding the working of the computer hardware. Uh, he mentioned this in his keynote as well. He likes, uh, he likes understanding the working of the computer. OK, so that's, that's good enough for that. Let's, uh, everybody just turn your head while I go through these real quick. <laughs> OK, anyway. OK, time for game one is over. We're running out of time, so we're going to run the last one really quick. Um, this is rock, paper, scissors. I think most of you know how rock, paper, scissors works. Um, this is against the presentation. The presentation has canned answers. Hey, we're not doing lizard Spock this time. Uh, or what did I do? I did penguin krill one year. Um, so this is what the hand signals look like, paper, scissors, rock. OK, so you're going to hold those over your head uh, so you don't need your papers anymore. And let me see. Oh, it's like, so this is, uh, I think everybody knows what the, uh, the rules are. In this game, if you beat the presenter, you get to stay in the game. You, if you tie the presenter, I'm sorry, you lose. Uh, so that means 2 thirds of you mathematically are going out every round. It's a brutal game. Uh, but so everybody up. Um, I'm going to say one, two, three, go, and then you guys are going to throw, and then I'll reveal the answer. So don't change your answer after, after we do it. So one, two, three, go. OK, and the presenter is rock. So if you're paper, you get to stay in the game. 
Okay. Yeah, this is brutal. It goes fast. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say one, two, three, go. Okay, some of you know what I do here. I always do two rocks to start with. If you've been, I wondered if this time I should change it up, but uh, remember, I might not next time. Okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, what you probably don't realize is that from here on out, I use, I actually have a Python program that generates the answers, so they're random after this. And random sequences end up doing, uh, okay, so if you're rock, stay in the game. Oh, wow, are we down to four? Okay, winners. So even I don't know what's coming up next. I mean, I wrote the presentation, but I didn't memorize the. Okay. Okay, let's uh, stand back up again. Oh, and if you guys could confer and see how many prizes we have left. So we got four, three, how many? Two? Okay, so we're at oh, five, seven, ten. We're at ten left. Okay. Um, Ready? Oh, one, two, three, go. And this time the presenter is paper. So if you're scissors, stay standing. Okay, one, two, three, go. And this time the presenter is scissors. <laughs> All right, people are getting excited out there. Okay, and one, Two, three, go. This time the presenter is rock. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, wow. Okay, that was more brutal than, than mathematically expected. Okay, so we got four left. That puts us down to six. Okay, oh, yeah, four if I count correctly. Okay, I think we have enough for one more round here. We'll wait until we get, let him get his thing. Yep. Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end here. This will probably be the last round. Um, oh, well, and then I just have a couple of closing remarks. So, uh, okay. Ready, set, go. And if you are scissors, stay standing. Okay. Oops. Ready, set, go. Oh. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys mostly had it up. Okay, so if your scissors stay, stay standing. Okay, I'm going to not advance it until I actually see it. Wait, 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 how are we doing? Yeah, we need to go one more, I think. You have three. You have three? How, are you at zero? Luca. Luca. Yeah, you're out. Okay, so we have five? Okay. Sorry, we got to go one more round. Which mathematically, that's a bummer. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, go. Okay, if you did rock, you're going to be happy. Oops. Yeah. Is that is that five? Oh no, it's six. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, it's seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we got to go one more time. Oh, you guys are so close. Okay, one, two, three, go. Oh, interesting. It's paper. Wait. All right, that's it. Out of applause. Okay. I used to fast forward through these, but since I randomize it, I don't really need to worry if you see them. Um, I, sh I could get out of the presentation. <laughs> oh, okay. So just time real quick for a closing thought. Um, so we're all here because we work on open source. We use open source. Hopefully we contribute to open source. Um, uh, just. Just one thing as a final thought. Do something in an OSS project. It doesn't have to be code contribution. It can be uh, documentation. It can be infrastructure help. 
Uh, even, and I said this in my keynote, even if you, all you do is get on the mailing list and tell people how you're using the software, that is valuable. Uh, as a maintainer myself, I really appreciate learning what the use cases are. Um, and so almost anything that you do in an open source project is helpful. Okay, not everything, but almost anything. Uh, uh, and so don't wait to join a community. Don't think, well, I'll do this next year, or I'll wait until the end of the project. Just get on the mailing list and occasionally lurk. And the very first thing is just to be watching, see how the conversations go. And eventually, you'll find some place, uh, some way that you can contribute. Um, the first contribution that you make, the first email that you send, to a list is hard. The first code contribution you do is hard. It gets easier the more you do it. Um, the XC backdoor, one of the reasons that it worked, or one of the reasons it made it as far as it did, was because we had an overworked maintainer who um, felt like he wasn't keeping up, and if people had been there to help him out, you know, the story could have been different. Luckily, it was caught because of the open source effect. Um, the last thing, OK, so your contribution can make a difference. So just the very last thing I want to say is a um, couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to go see uh, the eclipse uh, in the US with my son and my granddaughter. And uh, I just think, you know, eclipses don't come around very often. I think the next one in the United States is 2045. Uh, so I might not even be around. Uh, I think sharing your enthusiasm for something is one of the most important things you can do. Uh, share uh, your excitement about open source. Share uh, the message of open source. We have this great resource that we're working on together uh, that is making the world a better place. And so with that, I'll just leave you the thought that the future is bright. We have, go, out and, go out and contribute and be a member of the community. I, I hope that you've uh, learned something uh, from your attendance at ELC this year and that you've had a good time, and I hope to see you all next year. So thanks. <laughs>